Good morning, ladies. We're absolutely delighted to be introducing you to Linda Buckman. She is an amazing woman I've been studying under for the last month, and um, it's just quite a journey to discover the things that she's really researched in depth. So she's going to be talking to us about how to have confidence and freedom uh, in our bodies and to help us as image consultants to help our clients in that way as well without dieting and without sweating to lose weight. Linda has, um, well, she's a personal style therapist, author, and founder and creator of the Stellar Beauty Planetary Body Type Style Systems. And uh, she's a celebrated coach in the San Francisco Bay Area and with 30 years experience. Um, her background is in fashion, makeup, and styling. And she has been a clothing designer a cosmetics creator and a professional makeup artist. She has had clients right across America and has shopped for them in Paris, New York, San Francisco, Moscow and Berlin. Wow. In 2008, Linda was named the best of the San Francisco Bay Area personal stylists by the San Francisco magazine. And she is a certified image professional with our association the AICI. Um, inspired to do more than just dress women, the outside women, Linda saw a huge need to address the epidemic of low self-esteem among women. Uh, she's passionate about changing the paradigm of beauty to include the full diversity of women. Wow, so this is going to be a wonderful session. Linda, I'm going to hand it over to you and <laughs> so looking forward to hearing what you've got to say. Great. Thank you so much, Evelyn, for inviting me and having me here. And I know you're all busy and you have lots of things to do. So I really appreciate that you've decided to spend some time with me on this webinar. And um, I'm going to be <clears throat> getting into something you've probably never, ever heard of before. But before I do that, you know, I was thinking, gosh, our industry as stylists is probably going to change forever because of this pandemic, because of the fact that we can't get into stores. We don't know when that's going to be able to happen. And I'm sure that a lot of you are, are not able to work with your clients like you, you, know, you want to or, or you normally do. And uh, this is a challenge. And it's a challenge for everyone. Um, but I, was, I wanted to see if any of you have or are interested in being more of a body confidence coach for your clients, um, involving yourself in how they feel about their bodies and helping them step into their power and all of that. Has anyone ever done anything like that or, or interested in it? Okay, I'm seeing no's. Oh, good, all right, and? And Ilona, that's wonderful. Well, I, about 12 years ago, decided that I had to do more. This was, a, this was a real frustration that I had, working with clients in the closet when they look in the mirror, they're dressed in a beautiful outfit, and they look at the part of the body they don't like, and they look at their face. You know, you can just tell. It's like it doesn't matter if they're wearing a beautiful outfit. If they don't feel good about their body, then, you know, they can't express their beauty. And I was very, very frustrated with this and wanted to do more. So that was from a, a very personal feeling of what can I do? I mean, after all, we're in the women's bedrooms and closets, right? We're watching them dress. It's a very intimate kind of job that we have. So is there more that we could do? And, and this is something that after today's webinar, you might be thinking, well, maybe I could do a little bit more of that and charge for it. So I have found my business really became quite lucrative by adding this dimension to what I do. Now, I am a certified life coach, and, and I, I did a couple years of training for that. But what I've developed in this system is a way for you to do it without that certification of being a life coach and uh, working with your clients in an added way or an added dimension. Um, and so that's um, what I'm, what I'm going to be talking about here. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so I'm sure the title 
Uh, having confidence and freedom in your body without dieting or sweating to lose weight is, is at the very least intriguing, right? Because um, we've been told as women for decades and decades that yes, we can feel confident in our bodies if they look a certain way, if we're thin enough, if we're fit enough. And um, for the most part, uh, we have had some traditional methods out there helping us with this challenge. And one of them are is diet programs. Well, if you lose weight, then you'll feel confident about your body and it'll be better and you can do the things that you want to do because you feel better about your body. Also, the you know exercise regimes and the personal trainers as another way to feel free, to, free in your body by changing the shape of it. And um, there, there is also coaching, um, like what I do, to help women reframe what they think in their brains. And a lot of what we tell ourselves when we look in the mirror is so much in our self subconscious that we don't even really recognize what we're saying. And it's been drilled into our brains for, for quite a long time. So you're going to see something completely new today. Um, and before I get started and tell you, I wanted to ask you a question. And you can type into the chat. Evelyn's going to be watching the, the chat so we can see and I can know. But um, on a scale of one to 10, and this is all, I want to say that, of course, this, this webinar and what I do is for your clients as well as it is for you. And you deserve to be um, in a place where you feel empowered in your body. If we all feel more empowered in our body, we're able to help other women do that. So it's for you and it's for the women that you serve, especially as a consultant. And it's a way for you and your clients to connect your body with your talents and gifts. And you'll get a new and empowering perspective that if you want and you want to share this with your clients, you're going to service them that much more. Um, you're going to uh, help them appreciate that the, the, the strength of women is the beauty is our diversity and not trying to look like a single ideal. And so on a scale of one to ten, right now, and this could change, you know, it could be different next week, but just for right now, how connected do you feel to your body? And I'll describe what a one would be and a 10. So a one would be disconnected. Uh, don't really communicate with my body. It's there, I feel it, but I don't have much of a relationship with it. I'm not really too happy about it. Uh, from the neck up, I feel pretty good, but from the neck down, you know, there's just, there's just no relationship or connection or, or lo love connection with my body. That would be a one. And then a 10, would be my body is my best forever friend. And I love using the word friend because a friend is someone that has your back. A friend is someone that doesn't mind that you have little quirks. A friend is someone who will support you no matter what, even when things aren't going perfectly. So that would be the 10. Go ahead and type in your number, how you're feeling right now. And because I can't see the chat, you can tell me, Evelyn, what sort of numbers we've yeah. got. Can you hear me, Linda? Yes. Okay, so we've got, um, we've got nine, eight, nine, eight and a half, I love that one, and nine and a six. Okay, okay. so we've got a whole range, but it's still fairly high. Which is yes, that, that is, that's wonderful. I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. So, I would assume that if you're at a nine, it would be pretty cool to be a 10, to have that kind of best forever friendship with your body. So is that where you would like to be? Whether you're a six or an eight or a nine, would you like to have that experience of having that kind of relationship with your body? And you can just shake your head if you feel like, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Okay, so, um, if there is a difference, and we do have a little bit of a difference between uh, the numbers and up to the 10, how could you, or what would you think would help you get to that 10? And you can write in the chat too, if, if there's a difference at all about how you feel about your body and want to, what could bring that number up? Anybody else? 
All right. Yes, we've we'll got just... somebody that says, I'd love to move with more grace and confidence. Um, Emma, uh, somebody said, a stronger, fitter body. We've got here, accepting um, my body shape as it is, especially at our stage of life as well. So we have to accept that. Accepting my body shape is need to be fitter and a greater acceptance of perceived flaws. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So we've got a range of things, don't we? From this embracing, accepting idea. Hey, my body is how it is. I'm going to love it. You know, even if it doesn't meet the ideal, which is wonderful. And um, even the exercising, the being healthier, all of that stuff is really great. And probably if we focused on it would help us. So I want you to imagine something different. If you knew for a fact, that your body, just the way it is right now, is perfectly built to communicate what you're naturally good at. In fact, from day one, you're born, as you grew up, that body that you grew up in is built for you. It, would that make a difference about how you might feel about your body if you understood, hey, my body is here to help me communicate what I'm good at? Mm. Would that help? Okay. Good. And what if you knew for a fact that your body, just the way it is now, supported your gifts and your talents and is, was really designed to support you so that you feel fulfilled, happy, and successful? This is not something that we typically think about, that our body is designed to help us fulfill. We, a lot of women think, well, I have to go after my goals and I need to succeed. Um, and then I can be happy once I and feel fulfilled once I'm successful. Um, but would you feel freer and more confident if you knew that your body is there and is designed to make you feel happy? That's its purpose. Mm. All right. Okay. So if you answered yes, and this seems like, uh, gosh, if I, if I learn more about this, um, how to understand that my body is built for me. What's the connection between me, uh, wo the woman I am on the inside, and my body? And there's a very strong connection there. And that's what the system brings up for women so that they can feel more confident and free in their body without doing the traditional things, um, the, the therapy, the coaching, the diets, and the fitness program. So... Let's talk a little bit about what it would be like to be at a 10 all the time. What it would be like to be a what I call body confident woman. And I use this phrase because I know that we've gone through a stage of body positivity. And a lot of that was geared around you changing your mindset and working on what you think about yourself. And the, the pressure there was, well, that means I'm supposed to love every little inch of my body, all, everything about it. And that, for a lot of women, just put more pressure on them. So what am I talking about when I'm talking about body confident woman? She is the woman who is connected to her body on a level 10. She has peace. She feels harmony within herself. And here's what it might be like when she gets up. She gets up in the morning. She goes and looks in the mirror. And she says, hello, body. And she's looking at her best friend. And she checks in with her body and says, how are you doing today? How are you feeling? And there's a conversation going on between what you see in the mirror and yourself. And then you go into the kitchen and you fix your coffee or tea and you're figuring out what am I going to eat today? And, and a body confident woman would ask her body, what do you feel like eating? What would make you feel at your best with the level of energy you need for the day, etc." Then she would be, you know, the kind of person that is not obsessed with looking a certain way, but just plain embracing herself. Um, when she goes into her closet to get dressed, there's nothing in that closet that doesn't love her body because she knows that her wardrobe is there to serve and love its master. So those clothes that are too small and don't fit, not, not there. And she can pick out something from her wardrobe that loves her body. That's the goal of, of, of what she's doing, other than figuring out you know, what's appropriate for her to wear that day. And she has a sense of belonging, ease, and naturalness 
being in her own skin. And you might be this way, or you might have met a woman where you just know that there's, this is happening. She's just so comfortable with herself and able to be herself. And she feels good being in her skin. Um, she extends this warmth of self-acceptance self to other women too. And she's not the type of woman to compare herself to others, other women, or negatively thinking about what her body isn't and she wish she had more of that. Um, when she gets into her day and she's, she's working with her team or a client or family members or whoever she's going to engage with that day, she is able to speak her truth. She is able to step into herself and be herself and speak in a way that's truthful for her. So there's a lot of power in a body confident woman. There's no jealousy. Can you imagine a world where there was no jealousy between women? How awesome that would be. Um, and she understands that we all contribute in a beautiful way. So she would say things like this. My body is a wise and faithful friend. I completely believe this, that our bodies have so much wisdom, that they can teach us so many things, and that they are always, always there for us. And my body is built to express my talents. My body is the best vessel for communicating who I am. Is that something that you might like to experience for yourself to be a body confident woman? I'm seeing some heads go up and down. Good, awesome. All right. Now I understand that we all have dreams, don't we? We have dreams for our business. We have dreams for where we wanna live, for our relationships and all of that. And I appreciate that. That's what I'm really here for is there's a difference between this program I'm going to tell you about and the weight loss and the fitness training and all of that, because this is not about changing your body. It's about getting a new and empowering perspective on the body you have, just as it is that you already live in. And I swear to you on my Chanel jacket that I bought on the real real. <laughs> <laughs> pre-owned luxury wear, that you don't have to change your body to be happy in it. Okay, so you may say, well, Linda, you know, I mean, look at the pressures we're under, look at our society, they're always holding up this skinny fit, you know, ideal, and I'm supposed to look like that. I've tried, but you know, when it comes right down to it, I'm still critical of myself. Well, I want you to know that it's not your fault. If you have, or if you do, because why is that? Because there's all this information around us that are telling us our bodies need fixing, are telling us our bodies are flawed. And then on top of that, there's a lot of uh, messages out there telling us how to unflaw it. So if a woman feels flawed, well, then the idea here is that she's gonna buy products or do something to be unflawed, to make her body better. And that is the nature of the beauty industry, isn't it? I mean, we all work in it, we all love it, but, but we do know the messages that are out there for our clients, um, the cultural expectations. And you see, of course, being thin is, is such a priority. Um, I used to feel that way. You know, if I was a few pounds overweight, it was, I felt terrible. I mean, just that one thing alone that has pressured us to not feel good about ourselves and to try and do something to be thinner is, has been there for a long, long time. And we do know that the advertisement with the models show us, well, there, if you're thin, you can wear leather pants. You know, if you have the coolest pair of sunglasses or handbag, that makes you cool. Uh, that makes you more hip, more sexy, whatever it is. And then there is this whole youthful, being youthful, right? That we're constantly hearing about. Our skin needs to be forever preserved as a young person. And we've got serums and we've got plastic surgery and all that kind of thing. So we know that it's all out there. The beauty industry makes it really tough for us to feel empowered in our bodies. If our motivation for being better, for feeling healthy, for getting thinner is to live up to a societal ideal, we're never going to be happy. And why is that? Because they always change what the next thing is that you need to do to unflaw your body. It's a cycle. And what do they do? They sell, tell us this big, huge 
uh, multi-billion dollar fashion industry that our bodies need fixing. I'm telling you, they are wrong because what motivates them? They want to make a profit. They want you to buy products. And so that's their motivation, which isn't going to be something that necessarily empowers you to feel good about yourself. And if you've ever thought that corporate giants want you to feel vulnerable, so you will buy their products, you are probably right. They don't benefit from you thinking your body doesn't need fixing. And that is the, that main motivation. So we have a lot to contend with, and so do our clients, when they're trying to embrace their beauty. Now, I wanted to be very transparent here and tell you a little bit about my journey. Would you like to hear about my journey from feeling awful about myself to, to feeling empowered? Uh, for the longest time, I uh, felt that the, you know, being thin was the number one priority. And in college and after college, I took up marathon running and I ran and I ran and I ran. And I got to the point where if I didn't run 10 miles a day, I didn't feel good about my body. So I was really obsessed. And then I developed a, a, a terrible eating disorder. That was for the same reason. All of this was around me trying to be someone I wasn't and feeling disappointed in myself. And so, you know, my body was weak. I wasn't listening to it. Um, I was not in good health. And what happens? When you feel disappointed in yourself or the way you look, you disconnect from your body. So if you think about like a person that you don't like that much and you, you see them in a room, usually you want to turn away and not engage. That's what it's like with your body when you're rejecting how it looks. You can't really connect with it in the way that you could. And ultimately, you disconnect from yourself. This is how I felt. Uh, and you know, it was a long journey to get out of that to recover from the eating disorder and all that sort of thing, and to just love being in my body. So regardless of societal standards um, and you know, the fitness regimes and all of that, empowering you to be you, who you are, that's the key to true connection with your body. So would you like to know what this, new thing is that I have put together and studied to write and uh, share with women. It's actually a new lens. I call it a new lens. So if you had a lens through which to see yourself where you could see something different than what you do in the mirror, then you might be able to embrace your body just the way it is. And the women that you see in here, I'm going to show you them. These are the stellar beauty, the seven stellar beauties that cover this incredible range of female diversity. And I call them the planetary body types. Would you like to know how I found out about them? Mm. I was very surprised um, when I went to a, a, a gentleman and he mentioned the planetary types and he described my brother as a Jupiter uh, Mars. And I had never heard that before, ever. So I was, what's this? You know, this is interesting. And I kept this kind of on the back burner. Believe me, these, these illustrations did not exist. There was a lot of information written about these planetary archetypes in all different ways, all different cultures, going all the way back to Egypt. And, it, and they called them the seven divine principles. So there's something very universal about this concept. And that's what I saw, but it, none of the material was written for women. And a lot of it was rather on the negative side. The language was old. And I decided that I wanted to create something for women using this concept. So here we have Saturn, Mars, Mercury, Solar, Jupiter, Venus, and Lunar. And the approach that I have here, as you can see, their bodies are different, right? Uh, the approach that I use is that your body is built the way it is to support you and that there's a strong connection between who you are and your body. So let me give you an example. Let's look at Saturn there on the left. This is how I describe her. She's straight up and down, right? She doesn't have a waist. She's, uh, her shoulders maybe are a little wider or 
the same width as her hips. Now, a woman who's a Saturn, you think, oh my God, she's so thin, she's so tall, she's absolutely gorgeous. She might be thinking, my shoulders are too bony. I don't like my elbows. I wish I had a bust, right? I wish I had a curvy waist, et cetera, et cetera. So, but here is how, and you see her arms crossed there. The Saturn woman is the one that's more contained in her energy. So I'm gonna be talking about their energy, the way they express themselves, and who they are on the inside. So listen to this description of a Saturn. Her straight, structured body lines fit with her contained emotions, linear thinking, and upright integrity. She has a handsome femininity and a straight-lined, level silhouette that pays tribute to her level-headed personality. Like a sculpted column that proudly holds the weight above it, Saturn's body is built to handle responsibilities in life with grace and skill. So there's a lot to who Saturn is and her personality fits with this structure in her body. She's actually a very structured woman. She likes to be organized. She uh, you know, can set up everything from beginning to end. And she's very cool, she's contained, she thinks logically, she's not really an, a very emotional uh, woman. So that's a little bit about one of them and how I have made this connection between their body and who they are. Now, if you had a Saturn client who didn't like her body in particular, you could um, tell her that, well, I see your structure as a, a beautiful expression of how you are structured in your life. The other really great thing about this is that this is like a big secret, girls, okay? So if you see a Saturn, you're immediately gonna know a little bit about her just by looking at her and by reading her energy. And this helps you to communicate if you have a Saturn client. What's a Saturn client gonna want? I want a list. I wanna look at my closet and fill the holes. You know, schedule's important, be on time, things like that, of how to talk to a Saturn. You wouldn't use a lot of emotional expression with a Saturn because she wants facts, she wants to hear it so that it seems logical to her, etc. So the big secret here is that the physical clues tell you who the woman is on the inside. And that's very exciting. So you might be asking, well, Linda, there's only seven bodies there. How in the world can this describe all of us in our grand diversity? How do these types relate to me? Well, I think that Ev Evelyn could probably tell you when we had our call and we looked at her types, how connected she was with, wow, that really describes me. That, that's who I am. Now, when you figure out, and I help you figure out your type, you're never just one, okay? Most women pick two. And the reason is, is that we're all, we all have different things that relate to these different types. These types are pure in form. They are sort of like our archetype to look at. But when you dig in a little bit more, usually you find that there's a secondary type as well. And what will the perspective do for you? Just what I've been talking about here to appreciate that your body is built to support, to communicate, to uh, help you be successful in your life and your talents and gifts. Have you ever heard any, about anything like this before? I just wonder if you've heard anything like this before. Okay. So would you like to know how, once you learn your types, um, this can help you? And, and this would be for you personally, as a consultant, as a woman, you know, who, who wants to feel empowered. When we're empowered, we can do anything, can't we? We can do whatever we set our minds to when we feel empowered in ourselves. So the first thing that I think is most important is that we recognize our diversity. Now, I believe that because of our societal dictates, we have dulled our eyes to the beauty of women in their full diversity because we're always looking at one or two body types. So this is gonna teach us how we can celebrate our diversity as women and take back that beauty birthright. What do I mean by that? Well, if you 
Remember when you were a little, little girl and you weren't self-conscious about your body yet, you had a lot of fun being in your body. You felt free. You were exploring. You were wondering, oh, this is so incredible. What can my body do? And then, of course, the messages came in and then there was that first time we felt self-conscious about ourselves. But I'm telling you that you can have that same kind of freedom that you did when you were a little girl. Once you really understand how incredible your body is and what it does for you. And one of my personal goals is to vanquish body comparison and jealousy amongst women. I think that we can get to that point where we don't negatively compare ourselves or talk about how other women don't look very good or whatever you know women tend to do that we can embrace each other we can accept ourselves we can accept each other so giving yourself the freedom to be you to genuinely rejoice in your beauty and also in other women is what this system will help you do would you like to hear the story about how i found out about these planetary types mm. Okay, good. So it came in a very weird way. Um, my brother there on the left, you see his name is Barry. He was killed when he was 21 in an oil rig accident. And I was just 13 months older than him. So we were really like twins. And I grieved so for a good four years after he died. And when I moved to California, I just felt like, what can I know about him? You know, he, He's gone, but I feel him. He's, I feel his presence. And so I decided to go to a spiritual person to find out where he was, what he was doing. Uh, why did he die so young? Things like that. Questions I had in my mind for a long time. So I went to a man who was a, and I don't know if you've ever, anyone's ever been to a person who channels an energy or an entity. I know it sounds kind of weird, but... Um, he was wise in the ways of um, acceptance. And the, the system or the book that he wrote is called the Michael Handbook. And the whole purpose of the book is that we need to learn to accept each other. That's the highest form of love. So when he, I had this picture of Barry, I showed it to him and he said, well, he has the kingly leadership of a Ju Jupiter and the fiery courage of a Mars. And I'd never heard that before. Then he went on to describe my brother in such an uncanny way that I, I, I was floored that he was really describing him just from a picture about the way he was. Now that picture of him on the left, he did everything. He, the fiery courage of a Mars, Mars is the warrior, Mars is the athlete. And this guy took so many risks in sports. He's looking up at one of the third flat irons in Boulder and, just, and looking to see where he could free climb without ropes. And, he, and that's what he did. He was a uh, crazy extreme skier. He took risks all the time. Uh, and this was very true about him. When he was just eight years old, he was determined to go faster on his little tiny sled down a steep icy hill, much to go faster than the boys much older than him. So he did that. He got on his little red rider sled, went straight down, under a car, crashed into a telephone pole, and knocked himself out. And my dad, of course, went and rescued him. He was okay, but he had to stay inside. If he, if he wanted his way, he would have gotten back out there and gotten on that sled again. So this was the kind of guy he was. I wanna just tell you a little bit about how he was a Jupiter. This was a remarkable thing about him because he was the class president for the nine, 10, 11, 12 grades and he had no click. So Jupiter has this kingly like leadership that's very inclusive. He was friends with the science club. He was friends with the jocks. The principal loved him. The school secretaries would talk to him. The, the parents of the little league to, to, uh, team that he coached admired him. He just had this way of leading people and making everybody feel like they were a part of things. And that is a quality of the Jupiter. And he would go to school dances and by himself, just so that he could ask girls that were standing on the wall to dance. That's the kind of guy he was. So um, finding this out, of course I didn't get answers on why he died, but then I realized, wow, he lived in his body so fully for those 21 years. And that for me was very encouraging. So 
what did I want to do immediately? Find out my types. And I learned that I am a Mars solar. So I have the warrior side to me, the athlete, just like my brother. We did, I've done, I do a lot of sports and a solar, which is different. And I started looking at myself in my life. I had not appreciated that I was a warrior on the inside. I had not appreciated my strength at all. Um, and when I found out that, yeah, I'm athletic, but I have this Mars woman on the inside who's courageous, truthful, um, and is an activist for positive change, that really changed things for me. I started standing in my truth. I started showing up stronger because I knew that I had this Mars on the inside and outside. Now, the solar part of me, she is the creative, and I've been creative all my life, but after I graduated from college, I couldn't afford art school, and I thought, well, okay, you know, I'm going to give up that career of being an artist because I can't afford to go to art school. But, of course, I learned, no, 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 no. You've been creative all your life. It's part of your being. It's who you are. And that released in me this desire to pursue a career that was more creative. And I did that. I changed my career. I got into designing clothing. And um, from that point on, I started doing things that I really appreciated and loved. And a lot of it was around being artistic. So from designing clothing, to makeup, to being a professional makeup artist, to working one-on-one -on -one with women, this just, made me so happy. It was just thrilling for me to be able to be in a career, create, as so many of us have, right? We've created the career of a stylist. I mean, were, were you a stylist when people, you tell people that and they say, oh, uh, you do hair, <laughs> right? I mean, just the word stylist was people hadn't heard of. So we've created this beautiful career and it shifted gears for me. It also shifted my relationships to people because I started being more myself and stopped trying to be something else. And um, I had such a dramatic experience with this that I thought, boy, what if I could do this for other women? What if I could help them the same way I felt now much stronger, more empowered in myself? How was I to go about that? I wanted to help them feel good. As I said before, part of my mission is to empower women with their beauty. It's not just to dress them. That's me personally. So how was I going to do this? Well, of course, we all look to the traditional systems about the body. And one of them is the body shape system that we've been given and we use uh, to help women understand their proportions, to help women understand their shape. I personally never liked this. I did not think it was that wonderful to be compared to an inanimate object, a beautiful woman being compared to a pear or an apple or a goblet or a brick or any of those, right? And so for me, this wasn't going to do it. And here's part of the reason. I've collected a lot of vintage ads. You know, advertising is not that old as an industry. And this is what started to happen was I guess probably in the 40s, 50s, probably when advertising was starting up. And you know we had sketches of clothing that artists would do, but then they started doing photography. And this was an ad for the Warner's Concentrate Girdle and the Little Fibber Bra. And it says in the first line there, girls with too much bottom and too little on top. Well, what does that tell us? I mean, come on, really? This is no shape for a girl just to get us to buy a girdle? This kind of thing really gets under my skin. But, but you can see why a woman probably wouldn't really love being called a pair. This is the history behind the advertising. And a lot of the advertising was done so that we would please our men. I mean, this is, you know, this was what we were doing. We were pleasing the men in our life. So I wanna tell you that your body is not an object. It's a living, breathing, animated entity that expresses your inner self through a lot of things, your facial expression, 
your energetic presence, your speech, your posture, and the way you move your body. It's so much more than an inanimate object. So let me introduce you to one of my seven types. This is the lunar woman. And if you look at the sketch, you see, well, I guess in the old system, we would probably call her a pear shape. Small sloped shoulders, full hips and thighs. Now the lunar woman on the inside is very soft. She's more quiet. She takes energy in and absorbs it and reflects it back. She's very intuitive. She senses energies. And um, the softness of her body is reflected by the softness of her personality and who she is. So a lot of times, you know, because I get lunars and they hate their bodies, right? And I'll say, wait a minute here, think about those softly cascading shoulders, how they curve into your waistline and your dewdrop hips, and beautifully enhance your subtleness, your quietness, the fact that you're soothing and can even be mesmerizing. That changes the way a lunar woman views herself by thinking about it that way. There's no hard edges, there's no sculpted bones, that's just a picture of beauty and the way that I like to think of it is like a, a waterfall. She's like a beautifully moving waterfall. So that's Lunar, the goddess of reflection. And I'll tell you a little bit more about her later. All right, so the second thing that we're all faced with is the skinny culture. I don't have to say much about this, do I? Because, you know, we've dealt with this ever since we were young. This lower picture here, it was a newspaper article that was entitled Lost Her Boy because her boyfriends, because of fat. <laughs> I mean, can you believe it, right? Uh, oh my God, panic. I'm gonna lose my man. I'm not gonna be able to get a man if, if I'm quote fat. So what is this woman up here gonna, how is she gonna feel about herself, right? If what we're supposed to do is look like this, if this is an anorexic model, right? What is she supposed, how is she supposed to feel about herself? Well, we know that, um, you may not know, but I did some research that women who are considered overweight, it was more difficult to get health insurance. I'm sure that's not true any longer, but that was the case. And what did it mean to be fat? You were lazy, you were un unintelligent, you were weak-willed, you're sloppy, blah, 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 blah. This is the image that has been presented to us about, quote, being fat. I feel fat means I hate my body. How many of you have ever said that, I feel fat? I have. Have you ever said that? Oh, I just, I feel fat today. Well, um, I used to say it and it was just like, well, I'm just not happy with myself. I hate my body. Well, what do we know? We know that 67% of all women in the US, I don't know what it is in Australia, but in the US are a size 14 and up. And I'm sure that you have clients who are a size 14 and up. How do you work with them, right? The skinny ideal has made us strive to improve our bodies and we despise ourselves in spite of it or not for not living up to it. And the diet part, the diet culture, we've learned that diets really don't work because it's a temporary food plan. It's a scarcity plan and your body reacts to that. And you may lose weight, but about 95% of all people gain it back in about five years. So depriving yourself and going on a restrictive diet can lead to a diet overeat or eating disorder like I had when I was in college. And this is what it does. So let me tell you about another one of my seven types. This is the amazing Jupiter woman. And you can see there, she's not a tiny woman, all right? She's got big, a big bust, a broad back. She's got sweeping arm gestures and full thighs. And I'm telling you, everyone, this woman is amazing. I, I, I cannot wait to talk to my Jupiter clients because they, they don't like their bodies. And then they learn that they're the goddess of majesty. They're the queen. They're needing to be on a throne somewhere and directing people. 
They are meant to be on stage. They are, like my brother, very inclusive. And they're born with confidence. But because of this, quote, fat culture and skinny culture, a lot of Jupiters have dulled themselves down and they haven't gone after their dreams. So I could think of so many things, but you know how we talk about things being big, being grand, being enormous, you know, using those lovely words. Well, what would a Jupiter be like? A grand manor on a hillside. Or, I love this one, a magnificent tree taking sustenance from the ground and from the sun and providing life-giving oxygen. That's what a Jupiter does. They are abundant and they, they bring abundance into the world and they provide for other people. So Jupiter, what is she? She's grand. And a lot of Jupiters speak loudly. They've got a good voice. They move in a way that projects themselves. A Jupiter would walk into a room full of people and you would feel her energy immediately. You would, oh, must be a Jupiter in the room. You can feel her energy, she projects it. So she's grand, she's generous, she's inclusive, she's compelling and destined to show up in a big way. Being a Jupiter and trying to be thin is like wearing your favorite sh sweater that shrunk in the dryer. It just doesn't fit. So do you remember in the beginning where I was saying about how your body supports your talents and that there is a, a strong connection between the two? Well, this is something that I wrote. So I found out about the, the, the types. I realized there was a lot lacking. I wanted to design the system around helping women love their bodies. So I selected what I thought were five gifts for each type. And these gifts are things that are unique to each type. And when you, when you take the training, like Evelyn has talked about, you learn really 10 gifts for your primary and your secondary type. And you learn how your body is connected to these gifts and that you can express them beautifully through your body. So this is something that is, is very key, again, to empowering women. That the gift of joy, for example, is a solar gift. And, and it's important to have it. It's important that we have people that are joyful that help contribute to the world. And that's what these gifts do. And you learn how to um, bring your gifts into your work in this program. Um, I changed my career. I was doing something I didn't enjoy. And so bringing in my creativity as a solar woman made me really happy. So you can imagine if you're utilizing your gifts in your work, you're gonna be really happy with what you're doing. This is my um, last example of how body is connected to gifts. And I wanted to share with you the Mercury type. She is called the strategist. She's small boned and petite, moves to a swift and snappy beat. And we know when we say someone is mercurial or what mercury does, you know, speedy, quick. She is a, like a little speed demon. She talks fast, she thinks fast, she moves her hands. She's nimble, she's quick moving, she's girlish, uh, very high energy, high, high energy. She's a, someone that can do 10 things at once and get it all done. And this quickness that her body has, because you see there, you know, she's not really that developed. So she would be one of these girls that would go through puberty and her body wouldn't change that much. So the hips, she doesn't have all that estrogen in her system, so the hips stay small. Now there's some women that have a lot of estrogen when they go through puberty and their hips widen, their body changes. But a mercury kind of looks like this through her whole life and, and usually you'll, a mercury will tell you her age and you'll go, no way, because they always look younger than they are. So she has this childlikeness that's youthful, curious. She uses her speed. She's very perceptive about people and she is a communicator. Communication is one of her gifts. You'll find a lot of comedians are Mercury women. They're sharp, they're quick. They just off the cuff can say things and incredibly perceptive about people. So here is where I'm showing you that the body is built for this quick mind that she has, for these gifts that she has naturally been given. She doesn't have to work for them, they're just there. 
and that's what we want to build. So would you like to hear how I set this whole thing up? How was I gonna do this? What was gonna be my framework to help women? Well, I wanted to present the inner outer game, right? That who you are is connected to your body. So the way that I did this, and I'm gonna show you in the next slide, is I used the concept of yin and yang and the elements of yin and yang in your face, body, and inner temperament. And why do I love that? Because yin and yang are opposites and they're equal, right? Not one is better than the other, but together they create a whole. I wanted to have a way for women to see how our incredible our diversity is and that we have opposites. There are women in the world that are completely different than you. They don't look like you, they don't have the same perspectives, they are almost what you would call opposite to you. That is the way it's supposed to be. That's the way it's supposed to be, okay? Then I wanted to teach them their primary and secondary types. It took me two years to perfect those illustrations. Um, and I started out with an illustrator, fashion illustrator, and then I perfected the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the body position, and so on. Um, and so I wanted to have something very visual for women to look at. Then the next thing would be, once you learn your gifts, then you're gonna appreciate your body much more. And, and that's what's behind the whole system. What happens when you appreciate your body? You feel empowered and you find joy in your work and you improve your relationship. So this was my game. This was my game plan. This is what I was gonna do to you know, help women. So I wanted to describe the yin yang. And you could, if you have a piece of paper or pen, you might start thinking about your qualities now. And how I do this concept of yin yang is that we look at three different things first. And we look at the body, we look at the face and the inner temperament to find out whether you are more masculine yang or feminine yin. Again, one's not better than the other. If you look at the illustration I did of the yin yang symbol, you see these cliffs, these straight structured edges in the daylight, that is a representation of what masculine yang might be. Straight up and down, chiseled, uh, more structured, uh, apparent visual to us because it's in the daytime. And a woman who's a really young woman, what kind of clothes is she gonna wanna wear? Is she gonna wanna wear frilly ruffles and, and soft feminine clothes? Not if she's masculine yang. She is the type of woman that looks really good in structured clothes or menswear. And isn't it amazing that we have this whole range of clothes to choose from? We have uh, Oxford, men's Oxford style shoes and menswear plaid pants. And then we have these beautiful, delicate, feminine garments to choose from. What does that tell us about us as women? That's how diverse we are. Or we wouldn't have that huge selection of clothes to choose from. So I have a picture of the feminine yin, soft rolling hills in the nighttime, kind of more mysterious. And you see there, a feminine yin woman would probably really enjoy soft fabrics and curvy lines like the ruffle would suit her beautifully. So they're very different, but one is not better than the other. So I put the seven types in the yin yang symbol for you to see. So you can tell that the Mars, Saturn, and Mercury women are somewhat similar, aren't they? Their bodies are more masculine. They're more straight up and down. The Mars woman is muscular and she has broad shoulders and small hips. We've already talked about that Saturn woman straight up and down and structured and then the Mercury woman. And they are the young woman. And then the, the yin are Jupiter, Lunar, and Venus. And look at their curves. So a, a yin woman is going to be curvy in many ways, in her face, in her body, her bust, her waist, her hips, and all of that. You also see solar there in the middle, and she's a little bit unique. She has both a yin and yang um, counterpart, uh, and she can combine with all the other types. But generally speaking, what are we talking about when we're talking about yang? Outwardly driven energy making a statement, being distinct, standing up for yourself, right? This is the type of energy that a young woman has, that she's always pushing that out. 
and her body and face are defined by more straight and angular lines. So if we see a woman who's really defined by straight and angular lines, that's telling us her body is more young. And it also tells us a little bit about who she is on the inside and what kind of clothes she might like enjoy wearing. So who's the feminine yin? She's more inwardly focused. So the yins, they take energy, they absorb it and bring it in. They reflect on it and they express it back. So that is a much different kind of energy than the outwardly driven energy. And the body and face are defined by these beautiful, soft, rounded lines and shapes. I'm gonna just take you through what a yang body looks like in a yin body. And you can see Claire Danes there. She's a great example of a Mars type. Uh, the yang body or the, and the Mars type have big shoulder blades. They have a big rib cage. And I, I always use the frame to describe this because isn't it really our frame that defines our body? Not so much our soft tissue, but our frame. Mm -hmm. So when she went through puberty, her pelvic girdle did not expand that much. Her hips stayed small. And Claire Danes has this very straight waist. The Mars type has a long torso and short legs. And where do they carry their power in their upper body? In their shoulders, back, and spine. And if you think about the spine, the rib cage protecting the softer organs, this is kind of like that young energy, strong, solid, uh, and protective. Then we've got our beautiful feminine yin body, very different. She's got a smaller rib cage. She's got smaller shoulder blades and kind of curved, nicely curved shoulders, but her pelvic girdle is wider. And she developed that when she went through puberty. So what does that give her? That gives her a beautiful waist, right? Isn't that amazing? That a yin woman, because of her structure of her frame, has that beautiful indented waist. And where does she carry her power? In her hips, in her butt, in her lower body. This woman that you're seeing is a model. She's a South African model. Her name is Mufo Kati. And she has a following like you would not believe. People adore her and she is big. She's got a big butt. She's got full thighs. You would think, oh, that's so disproportionate. She, she's sexy and she knows it and, and is a great example of a lunar type. You even see her face there, how the features are rounded, not chiseled or straight. The face for her goes with her body. Let's take a look at the face. So there's the yin face and the yang face. And the yang face, again, defined by straight lines and chiseled edges, aren't they? So they will have a squared off jawline, they'll have really straight nose, angled eyebrows, high cheekbones. Uh, even the forehead can be kind of flat and have corners on it. So it's very, very angled. And I call her, she's like a, um, a beautifully sculpted diamond. Right, she's got these beautifully chiseled edges. And you see Danica Patrick there, she is the only woman to have ever won an Indianapolis 500 car race, the only woman. And she is a powerful, powerful woman. Um, to, to race with men in cars going however fast, you know, you can just imagine. <laughs> but look at her face, look how she's chiseled in the same sort of way. Then we have the yin face, curved silhouette. Could be oval, round, kind of an egg shape. The cheeks, the brows are even curved. And a lot of times they'll curve kind of down. There's a softness to the nose. There's a softness to the face. No straight or chiseled edges. Now these two, remember, we've got Saturn. And the one you're looking at on the right is Jupiter, who's yin. Not all of us have a completely yang face or a completely yin face. We might have a little bit of a combination of features. And that is where we get into figuring out your primary and your secondary type. A lot of women have both yin and yang in them, okay? Let's talk a little bit about that inner temperament. So what's the yin temperament like? I described it a little bit to you. So they are absorbing, they're thoughtful, they receive, they're receptors of people and their environment. They are very intuitive. They can read people's emotions. They, they see the hidden intangible meanings of things. 
They excel at nourishing relationships and always, always, always ask us to consider how our actions affect others. So that's what the, the yins are there for to remind us. Now the yang temperament, it's more masculine, it's active, it's focused, it's People that are young like to influence people. They like to start new things. They like to create things that have an impact on the environment and on people. They're outwardly driven. They push energy out to the world. And what do they teach us? Well, you better take responsibility for yourself and distinguish yourself and get out there and do it, right? No one's gonna do it for you. That's kind of the, the young temperament. And again, you might have a little bit of a combination of both, but generally speaking, this is how we talk about it. So, does this all sound interesting to you? Yeah. <laughs> Yin and yang. Hmm, never really heard of that, but yeah, that kind of makes sense. Um, and uh, I hope that it sounds interesting because, you know, just speaking from the terms of yin and yang, we neutralize everything, don't we? Mm. Instead of talking about the pear shape or the skinny shape, we neutralize this whole idea that some are better than others. And that, that you're seeing this idea of yin and yang is just the start of the program and it's a way to look at your body in a new way. Um, if you take the training that I offer, you're gonna learn your types and your gifts and understand and appreciate yourself much, much more. I have women who've come into the course feeling like they're a nine or 10. I like my body, I'm pretty happy with it but they don't realize who they are on the inside as much as they could. And they learn about who they are and they learn to appreciate themselves. So some women really get that from it. Other women really connect more to their body. It's, it's, it's different for each and, every, each and every woman. So um, Evelyn is going to be in my next Stellar Beauty School and this is what I put together. So how, how am I going to help you understand your types, step into your freedom, really feel confident. Well, it takes a bit of reading, researching, looking. It took me 12 years to write my book. And so all of what I know, I put into a course. And it's a six week, it's my cat is meowing over there. It's a six week private Facebook group course. And when you get into it, you have complete chapters on the primary and secondary types. What do I mean by complete? Well, it talks about your life lesson, your life purpose, what you love, what your challenges are, how you relate to people, how people respond to you, what your gifts are, how you can incorporate them into your work. So you see, it's not just about your body. It, it's, it's so much more than that. So I have weekly units that I've created with a video of me speaking and a unit and a journal for you to take notes in on your own. And then uh, on, in the group, we have a daily engagement question, which has to do with what the, the unit is that you're studying. And you get all these learning modules and there are three 90 minute group calls in the course where you learn about your primary and secondary type and you learn to step in <clears throat> to yourself and be empowered. So here's what I would tell you, if it's something you might consider doing, because this is so new and just remember that the first step is your own journey and you're appreciating and empowering yourself. And then you can learn all of these types and use them in your business as an add-on. I have a course that teaches women how to use the types, how to learn the seven types. But this first one is really about you and it's giving yourself that space. So you've got a new portal now through which to see your body and appreciate this wonderful abiding connection between you and your body with your gifts to share with the world. What has it helped you to get rid of? The notion that your body is too anything, too fat, too flawed, too old, too short, too round, you get the idea, right? And it solves the problem of that anxiety that all women have felt about not being good enough, being flawed, needing fixing, having anxiety around that. And for many women, like it was for me when I was younger, this was, this was a problem that got in the way of me living my life. It was that bad for me. Uh, you know, I got depressed. I suffered from it. And it took me a while to pull myself out of all of that. So um, the modules you see there on the right, there's six weeks and six different topics. 
and we really dig in and we get into this and all of the women are posting in the group. So we're listening to each other. And what I've done is you're not only learning your types, but you're learning about all seven. You're learning about your classmates. So you're getting an idea each week. We feature one of the types. I ask you to watch a video of someone who's a Jupiter or a solar to get a feeling for what they're like. And we do this in two ways with yourself, and your own journey and learning about the other types. So I'm gonna just share a couple of success stories and I thought that you would might really appreciate um, this one. This is Colleen Aubrey. She lives in the San Francisco area. She, is a, she calls herself a head to toe stylist. She does everything. She does hair, she does color analysis, she does makeup, she shops for clients, does everything. And what did she learn? Well, Colleen is, fascinated with the system. So she's taken every class I've taught and she's now learned the types. So now she's using it in her business. And she says, my profits have increased because of this knowledge that I have. I understand on a much deeper level who my clients are. I know who's walking in the door. I know how to speak to them. And they feel so comfortable with me. They trust me and they'll buy anything that I suggest. So that's the kind of relationships that she has built in her business with increased profits in helping women love and appreciate their planetary type. This is a woman from Nashville, Tennessee, and her name is Laura, and she found out in the, in the school that she's a double feminine. She doesn't have that masculine yang. She's a solar and a lunar together, and she, always tried to be tougher. People told her she was too feminine, you know? And then she finally realized through this course, I, that's just the way I am. And as a solar woman, because solar stands for the sun, they are to shine their light to the, with the world. That's part of their purpose. And she was always holding back her light. But now she says, I give myself full permission to shine. I don't have to be tough. I don't have to dress like a guy. That's just not in me. Um, she also uh, disliked her thighs. You know, we all have those parts of our body that we, we dislike. Um, but now she understands that they enhance her. They're part of her soft and soothing personality. Isn't that amazing? To have that kind of a mindset shift around your body, a part of your body that you never liked, and to say, I love my curves now. Isn't that incredible? So she has this kind of freedom. That I was talking about. This is Sue Donnelly. Some of you might know her. She is also a very accomplished personal stylist from the UK and she teaches fashion feng shui. I think, Evelyn, you've had her uh, speak to your group before, so you know who she is. Yes. She's bubbly, she's bright, she's lovely, lovely, lovely. And she is a mercury solar type. And so when she learned this and learning her, you know, in the school, she felt that um, I have now a renewed sense of purpose. I didn't realize that I had all these gifts and that she has a recognition, a much stronger recognition of how she can contribute to the world. She was considering retiring, but if anyone knows Sue, she probably never will because she has so much energy. But she created a mantra for herself. This is another thing we do in the course. What's your mantra? Create, what is it there? Create, connect, and inspire. And she says, if you really want to truly understand how your body and you can help the world, this train, kind of training is for you. And you have a unique purpose with a divine body, and it helps you move forward with confidence. So that's what Sue says about the course. My last success story is a client of mine. Her name is Liberty. She lives in Idaho. And she is a Mars Venus. Mars and Venus are opposite to each other. Venus is voluptuous. Mars is the warrior. <laughs> and she had a lot of trouble with this. She um, was all very athletic, got a lot of praise for being really sporty. She would take people on adventure trips, kayaking, canoeing, skiing, you name it. She did it all. But guess how she dressed? She dressed in clothes that hung off her body. Why? Because she didn't like her curves. She thought, I'm supposed to be more athletic and thin, so she wore completely different clothes. So now she's realized, oh my goodness, I have this whole yin side to me. I have this Venusian quality 
of sincerity and loving kindness, and this is really how she is. And she brought together the yin and the yang part of her, which she had never done before. Um, and then realized that it's not all about pushing forward and doing all these things, but it's about enjoying life and, and being with people. So her wardrobe changed and she now loves her curves and she's wearing clothes that skim over those curves a lot more. And if she feels, if something doesn't fit, she doesn't feel bad. She actually just then has says, well, I'll wear something else. And she's changed the way she interacts with her body. So that is liberty. Good Would you like to hear about a little bit more about the course? We do. And you know what this reminds me of is that you might have questions. So, uh, and I already talked to Evelyn. After we're done here, I just have a few more slides to show you. Any questions, we'll do a Q&A. And, and I'll answer any questions you might have. So six weeks of body confidence. What does that mean? New class starting July 13. What are you going to get? I told you a little bit about the program. But I would say that this, you're gonna discover this deeper connection with your body and your gifts. Uh, and you won't feel like I'm just not good enough anymore. And this, you will also have much more of a freedom to banish these societal ideals and not even let them affect you. You can throw them out like a bad first date. And increasing your profits as a consultant is something that as I'm teaching the program, I'm finding women are experiencing and that to me is very exciting. It's like that part that you can add on to your business, especially when we're so uh, confined right now. So I've told you about Stellar Beauty School. The actual value of the school is 1400. That's not what you're going to have to pay, but that's the typical price for Stellar Beauty School for the six week group program. So I want to add in a bonus because you've invited me to be here on this webinar and I appreciate so much that you're here. I have another program that's a DIY and this is where you discover your types on your own. You learn about the yin and yang and there are 17 video recordings of these topics. Um, how to measure the proportions of your frame, style tips to balance your proportions, which would, might be interesting for you to look at from a different perspective. And then you get a master checklist that helps you choose your primary and secondary type. And this DIY package is 189, typically priced, but I'm adding this in as a bonus to the six week stellar beauty school program. And as you can see the value 1400 for the school and the DIY package at 189, we're talking about 1589 as the value. This is something I really love to do and that I also added in as a bonus. And this is a private VIP call with me. I created the system. I studied it for years. I have a lot of nuanced understanding about these types. And when we have our call, it's 90 minutes long. We record it. I write a personalized written summary. But we explore you from your young life up until adulthood, your perspectives, your beliefs, what makes you happy and fulfilled. And this will indicate to me a lot of things about the possibilities for your types. And it's a 90 minute call. So that is typically, I usually charge 550 for that. It's a bonus for you. And you can see here that the value for all three of these things is up to 2189. You're not gonna have to pay that, of course. I wanted to just show you and this would be something, if you're talking to your clients and they don't feel great about their bodies, what are their options? And we already kind of looked at that. Well, they can go on a diet plan. And you know, if you've ever done one, they're not cheap. And it, they provide all the food for you. You get some counseling recipes, maybe some online support. And so they cost as well, but you don't have a guarantee of lasting results. And usually diet programs don't really teach you a way to love and embrace yourself. They're just about you losing weight. Personal fitness training. Average cost is 40 to 70 bucks per hour. That's about 440 a month. It's a lot of work, isn't it? To train, to reshape and sculpt your body. Uh, six months to a year to get results. Could be anywhere up to $5,000 to have a pers personal trainer to reshape your body. So it's hard work. You get strength, flexibility, energy, all of that good stuff. But is there a way in this kind of a, a program 
to lovingly connect you with your body. The last thing that I think really does help women is the health and life coaching. I don't know how big that is in Australia, but it is really big in the United States. And people are hiring coaches. And so, you know, I'm a coach myself. This is something that I do in addition to the other things. That also costs money. And I just took an average of about $110 per hour for coaching, about $440 per month. And again, it, it adds up because usually that it takes time to develop a different mindset and to develop better habits and so on. So you're reframing your internal beliefs, which is very, very important. You're looking at your goals. You're dedicating yourself to becoming stronger, uh, having more success. But again, are you able to look at your body in a new way and connect to it with a fresh perspective? And so that's just for a comparison to how you can love your body, as I said, just as it is, without having to do anything <laughs> to it and step into your confidence and your individuality and learn your special gifts and how you contribute to the world. So if that was the case and you got all of that, would it be worth paying that full amount, 2139, but when you get up every morning, you have no, absolutely no anxiety about your body and you feel freedom and you don't feel the societal's pressure, would it be worth feeling this way about your body and yourself for the rest of your life? I hope that you're thinking, yeah, this is, this is pretty great. Not having to change my body, hmm, uh, that's pretty great. And still feel really good about myself. So this is what I put together, everyone, for you. Um, the program that would normally be 2139 is 999 for you. And if it's something you're interested in, of course, you can talk to Evelyn and I'm happy to answer questions and we'll go to those in just a second. But you can, Put in your browser, go.lindabuckman.com. That will take you to the page about Stellar Beauty School, and you can register from there. So I even have uh, set it up so there's a payment plan to make this as affordable as possible for everyone. And I'm going to give you my contact information. So my email is lynda at lindabuckman.com. And you can Facebook message me. I'm on as Linda Buckman. I also have a really fun Facebook group that's private. It's called Stellar Beauty Society. And in that group, we talk about one of the types of week. I show you pictures. You learn more. You learn a lot of things having to do with fashion items that work for the types. And all you need to do is request to join. And I'll, I will you know, bring you into the group. Okay, let me stop share now and let's see if we have any questions from any, any of you about what I've talked about. Well, Linda, somebody asked whether this was in US dollars and uh, I got back and said, yes, it is US dollars. So right. I, I can't, that is a wonderful offer at $9.99 US. That is really good value. Um, but you know what I love? I love the fact that we can just banish all the ideas of the so-called ideal body. And I, since doing your course, I've looked at things differently now. I actually get up in the morning. I think, well, what's going to support me today? You know, how do I feel about today? What do I need to put on? And I'm finding that it's actually a little more exciting just looking at making a real conscious decision about okay, I'm going to put this on, even if I'm working from, from home. Oh, I've got a sister in America, in North Carolina, and she's voluptuous and she's loud and proud, you know, she's, <laughs> and oh, it just, look, all, it, it just, everything falls into, into its right place. Do you have any questions for Linda? I think someone wanted to know what your type is, so you'll have to talk to oh, everybody. I had so much fun discovering that. I am actually a Mars uh, as my primary, with Mercury following close on its heels. And then I was really surprised to see that I had a smattering of Jupiter, which was interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I was fascinated with that. I, I just dived into all of the, those body types just to see where it all fitted. Mm. 
Great. Well, uh, I'm happy to talk to anyone and you can email me. We could get on a Zoom call if you really want to chat about it. Uh, happy to do that. Um, I know that this is something you haven't ever heard of before. No. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a new thing. But I think, uh, I think it could be a really nice add-on for you and your business and also for yourself. Um, empowering women is, is so important, I think. And, and when we all feel empowered, we raise ourselves up, right? Um, this, is, this is the real point of it, is stepping into our power. So I thank you for coming and taking your time to watch the webinar, and I look forward to talking to all of you. Linda, you are amazing. Thank you so much. All right. I'm going to blow you all a kiss. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.